Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Barium. I'm a categorical intern, and I'll be talking about red meat. Um, I have no conflicts of interest to disclose, as we talked about earlier. So generally, contemporary guidelines really recommend limiting the intake of red meat, both processed and unprocessed. These are several guidelines um, above 2015 to 2020. They said, you know, maybe one serving of meat is fine, but generally limit it. The World Cancer Research Fund said to limit it to moderate amounts, consuming very little processed meat. What very little means, I don't exactly know, but generally about 50 grams of meat. Um, uh, or like three servings a week was um, kind of the general guidelines. World Health Organization in 2015 um, published an article about how the consumption of red meat is probably carcinogenic and processed meat is considered carcinogenic. And they were referring mostly to colorectal cancer. Um, I just want to kind of preface this with a lot of these studies are usually based on observational studies and there's a lot of risk for confounding. So, you know, they're limited in establishing causal in, um, inferences. Just generally some benefits of red meat. Um, as we all know, it's a high source of protein. There's about 20 to 24 grams per 100 grams of meat. For reference, a six ounce piece of steak is about 170 grams. It's also a high source of fat. Um, this depends on whether it's trimmed or lean. Lean meats have more high um, polyunsaturated fatty acids like linoleic acid and monounsaturated fatty acids, um, which are lower and lower in saturated fatty acids, which are thought to be worse for you. They also have um, a lot of heme iron, which is more bioavailable, vitamin D, B12, the other B vitamins, zinc, potassium, magnesium. There's a lot of health benefits in children and pregnant women um, and elderly patients for um, preventing iron deficiency anemia or for assisting with skeletal muscle and bone mass development. Some risks, um, they're a high source of saturated fatty acids such as palmitic acid, myristic acid, and lauric acid which are um, found to have relations with increasing LDL. And red meat, especially processed meat, in a lot of Historically, um, papers have been shown to increase risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, particularly colon cancer, and there have been associations with dementia. Processed meats, which are um, usually done by curing, smoking, or salting, also contain n nitroso compounds, um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and heterocyclic aromatic amines, which are, um, can also be found in the process of just cooking on high heat or um, grilling, frying. Um, which we'll go more into in a few slides. So I'll just be presenting on different um, systematic reviews. A lot of these are based on observational studies, and these are the ones that tend to promote um, positive associations between red meat intake and all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and strokes. Um, but generally, the results are pretty inconsistent. In 2019, the Nutrirex um, committee, they published a guideline in the Annals of Internal Medicine that caused a lot of uproar, especially from the 2015 World Health Organization um, article about how meat is carcinogenic. Um, this, they basically had a panel um, with 14 members, seven from different countries and three from the community. They had like various doctors, dietitians. This is just a list showing that they have no conflicts um, financially or intellectually, and then kind of their general meeting, uh, meat eating habits. So this is the nutritional recommendations and accessible evidence summaries composed of systematic reviews. It was an initiative to establish trustworthy dietary recommendations that meet internationally accepted standards um, to develop these guidelines um, in addressing red and processed meat consumption. Their panel had three teams, so one was responsible for just supervising, coordinating the project, and making research questions and the guideline protocol. Another was um, included like more experts in health research um, methodology, epidemiology of nutrition, dietitians, um, research. They had a family medicine doctor and in general internist, three community members, and then another team to do the lit review, literature review. They used um, the system called GRADE, which is the Grading of Recommendations, Assessment, Development, and Evaluation methodology, and developed a questionnaire called uh, PICO for Population Intervention Control and Outcomes, um, which they conducted several randomized trials and cohort studies with over 1,000 people for greater than six months. 
um, with certain exclusion criteria, which like over 20% of the population that were pregnant had cancer or chronic health conditions, excluding cardiometabolic conditions. They really focused on health outcomes thought to be associated with consumption of unprocessed red meat and processed meat and didn't really choose things or choose to consider like animal welfare or environmental issues that are related to meat consumption, since those are a bit tougher to integrate with health concerns. And certain things that they focused on were considered critically important, including all-cause mortality, major cardiometabolic outcomes, um, such as stroke, diabetes, cancer incidence and mortality, quality of life, and the willingness to change meat consumption. And then other important outcomes were like weight, BMI, lipids, blood pressure, hemoglobin, and the people's reasons for eating um, red meat. They considered meat reduction um, to be reducing it by three servings per week. So if you eat a serving of meat every day, um, reducing to four servings a week, or if you have four servings a week, reducing to one serving a week. So um, the same annals of internal medicine article, they conducted a systematic review of randomized trials on processed and unprocessed meat. And um, this also included over a thousand pop, uh, people, participants. Um, they used data from several databases and looked at cohort studies. Um, most of the participants were like between 20 to 70 year old. They had conditions like diabetes or hyperlipidemia. And basically they found that diets lower in unprocessed or processed meat uh, were associated with decreased risk for cardiovascular mortality. However, there was very low certainty evidence. The risk was basically negligible and a small reduction in risk for non-fatal stroke, but no statistically significant association for overall and um, stroke and fatal stroke risk. Um, so there were limitations with lack of repeated measurement of intake in the dietary patterns or using measures that were not validated for red and or processed meats or just inability to really adjust for potential confounders. Um, here is just kind of a summary of those results. Kind of hard to see, but um, really there was just a small decrease in the risk for all-cause mortality um, associated with reducing intake, and this was very low certainty because of inconsistency. There was decreased risk for cardiovascular mortality, which again was very low certainty due to inconsistency. Low certainty evidence for a small reduction in non-fatal stroke, um, in the no statistically significant association between dietary patterns and the risk for fatal and non-fatal MI or cardiovascular disease. There was also a very small reduction um, for type 2 diabetes associated with um, lower intake of red meat, but this was also very low due to inconsistency. In diabetes, there was a systematic review and a meta-analysis that was conducted on randomized controls trials that evaluated the effects of diets containing red meat compared to diets with lower or no red meat on markers of glucose homeostasis. Um, generally, historically observational studies in the past have showed some sort of association with the risk of diabetes with red meat intake. However, this one showed no significant impact of red meat intake on the following compared to reduce or no red meat consumption. This evidence was also low quality due to inconsistency, indirectness, and imprecision, but really there was no impact on sensitivity of insulin resistance, fasting blood glucose, insulin, hemoglobin A1C, um, and so on. Another randomized control trial was comparing red meat consumption versus soybean, which is another source of protein, and really showed no adverse effect with consum consuming red meat um, compared to soybean proteins on the same um, factors and LDL and cholesterol. So with a lot of the associations with red meat consumption and cancer outcomes, there is highly inconsistent data out there. The 2019 meta-analysis um, just to summarize, really showed that low processed and unprocessed red meat was associated with a small reduction, again negligible like 1-2% to 2 in the risk of overall cancer incidence. This was very low certainty due to imprecision bias and mortality, which was also very low certainty due to inconsistency. There was really no statistically significant risk in the incidence of, um, of several other cancers including colorectal and gastric and um, in the risk estimates for mortality associated with these cancers as well. 
Another study in the European Journal of Epidemiology, um, they did a meta-analysis of prospective studies. And this study actually, on the contrary, did show a positive association with red meat intake and these cancers. But their sample size was a lot smaller. I should have included the number. But um, they showed that there was a positive association with breast cancer, endometrial cancer, colon cancer, um, lung cancer, and with the incidence as well. And then finally, just a study conducted in Korea for gastric cancer specifically. It was a meta-analysis done associating um, increased red meat with increased gastric cancer incidence as well. They talked a little bit more about the carcinogenesis with heme iron promoting formation of the nitrates with high heat cooking and high salt seen in processed meats as well. They found some positive associations in case control studies that they looked up and not in cohort studies and then different regions more like Asian, European, and Latin American countries but not so much North American populations. They found that there was a significantly associated risk with gastric cancer, but they did also mention some confounding variables like not accounting for like things like smoking and other dietary things and people eating fruits and vegetables or even the presence of H. pylori, which can all be confounders in the gastric cancer incidence in this population. Um, just one more systematic review in colon cancer, um, trying to see if there was any mechanistic data that can link red meat or processed meat to colon cancer risk. They were looking at kind of the carcinogenesis of colon cancer and how heme iron can affect, and really a lot of the studies that have been conducted, they would look at meat components and like rat models, for example, and they would have, a, like the meat consumption was more excess than what we would normally eat in our diet. And they didn't include like other biologically active protective compounds that are in our food, like fiber or starches. And the study found an insufficient um, evidence to confirm the link between red meat intake as part of a health dietary pattern and colon cancer risk. Here's another table to summarize some of these um, all-cause cardiovascular mortality, breast cancer mortality, and total cancer mortality. And again, really very low evidence that there might be any effect with red meat consumption and cardiovascular or um, total cancer mortality. And maybe a little, little bit of an effect on all-cause mortality. Um, they also looked at values and preferences to understand how what people you know, prefer or how that can help improve dietary recommendations. Some reasons to eat meat that they found amongst the population they studied were enjoyment, considering it to be a health, an essential part of a healthy diet, um, cultural reasons, it's important in their culture, and the uncertainty about preparing adequate or tasty meals without including meat. So they did find that a lot of participants were not really willing to give up meat eating or switch to meat substitutes, even when they were presented with information about potential negative health benefits. There was low certainty evidence that omnivores have attachment to meat and are unwilling to change their preferences. Few limitations was this was mostly done in high income countries like the US, Europe, New Zealand, Canada. Didn't really factor like socioeconomic status or religious beliefs. So I just wanna summarize the overall Nutrirex guideline recommendations and their summaries because I know that was a lot of information and just really not a lot of conclusive data. Um, with all the systematic um, trials they've conducted for reducing unprocessed meat, there's really little to no effect on the risk for major cardiometabolic outcomes and cancer incidence. There might be a small reduction in risk for major cardiovascular outcomes and diabetes, but no statistically significant difference in all-cause mortality or cardiovascular mortality. Very small reduc reduction in um, cancer mortality and no difference in the incidence of um, these types of cancers, including breast, colorectal, or gastric. For processed meat, interestingly, there is still a very small reduced risk for major comorbid cardiometabolic outcomes, um, including strokes, MIs, diabetes, but this was low to very low uncertainty. Part of that was because of the indirectness, and there were a lot of studies that looked at reducing dietary fat rather than red meat alone and a very small absolute risk reduction in overall lifetime cancer mortality. No statistically significant difference in outcomes of the um, several other types of cancer incidents. And lastly, the health-related values and preferences. As mentioned, there are several reasons that people generally enjoy eating meat. People are 
generally unwilling to change or reduce their meat consumption even when presented with data that it might possibly be a little harmful. And the certainty of evidence was overall low for reasons for eating meat um, and low for willingness to reduce consumption because of bias, like the surveys were unvalidated or imprecision where they had small numbers of participants or indirectness because they wouldn't specifically ask about health benefits that would motivate a reduction in red or processed meat consumption. So to summarize, the general recommendation of this guideline is to continue current consumption of both unprocessed red meat and processed meat. Both of these are weak recommendations based on all the low certainty evidence that was presented and several limitations, including cost, acceptability, again, didn't really consider animal welfare and environmental impact. But I think the harmful effects are really of small magnitude, and there isn't really enough data and conclusive evidence to really um, support the true causation effect of like red meat consumption with these risk factors. There's insufficient evidence to make strong dietary recommendations the desirable effects with reducing meat consumption, which may be negligible, lowering of risk of cancer and cardiometabolic outcomes don't really outweigh the undesirable effects for certain people, like the quality of life um, impact, having to modify their cultural meal preps or personal eating habits. Um, Nutri-REC guidelines suggest that people should continue to eat the current levels of red meat, whether it's processed or unprocessed, unless they choose to change their diet themselves. Generally, the evidence is fairly weak um, to support that unprocessed red meat is associated with an increased risk of disease incidence and mortality. And I think one of the biggest takeaways is there really just needs to be more high-powered, um, good quality research to understand and quantify the relationship between meat consumption and chronic disease. So, does anyone have any questions? Hi, um, thank you, Miriam, for that talk. That was really, that was really interesting. Um, I know I know that you mentioned that uh, there were a lot of things that weren't considered um, in terms of like the uh, environmental impact um, but I know in a lot of these in a lot of these studies they, they talk about kind of the externalities of the meat industry and and I know from for personal experience living in an agricultural town and growing up in an agricultural town um, with a lot of uh, with a lot of um, cows in the area, um, there there is a lot of like, for instance, pollution from farms, um, and perhaps there because we we produce more beef than you know the average town, we also have like a lot of restaurants that sh that sell hamburgers, right? Um, so I'm wondering if there was any talk about kind of these tangent externalities um, from the meat producing industry. I know that wasn't your your focus, right? But um, but this is such a tangled kind of web of of things that have a lot of implications on health, not not just in like directly consuming red meat, but simply being around the industry. Yeah, I fully agree, and I think um, a lot of the I guess literature that I looked into was more focused on just like the medical effects, like on LDL, hemoglobin A1C, like really specifically more tailored to where it's like they tried to exclude that type of criteria just because I think that in and of itself is just a whole other can of worms that's as equally important to consider the environmental impact of the red meat industry um, and other health possible health risks associated with that. But I didn't look too much into that, but I think that would be really interesting to look more into. Yeah, I mean, I think um, the question you asked is, is very important um, and uh, you know, a lot of the studies you're quoting, looking at putative effects of red meat, mix, they all mix fresh red meat and processed red meat, which um, uh, there is some suggestion in a number of low quality studies that maybe processed meat either due to nitrates or the curing process uh, has that. But I think uh, repeatedly many studies do not show a negative effect of, of red meat and um, uh, so, we're, we're, and then a, a lot of the, the studies, there are a lot of confounding variables, as you mentioned. They're often food frequency questionnaires, which is just very low quality research in and of itself. 
and then if you think about at least more in a more modern era where people are eating red meat is mostly hamburgers mostly in fast food which with the hamburger comes the bun which is uh, may have its own problems the sauce that's on it the french fries that are fried in uh, processed oils uh, the shake that goes with it, or the Coke that goes with it, the cigarettes that go with waiting in line uh, <laughs> in the drive through um, and the poverty that goes with eating uh, fried foods. Um, and uh, that's hard to tease out as compared to someone at home eating a meal with fresh uh, meat in it. I think yeah. underestimated are the nutrition, nu nutritive benefits of red meat, the satiating effects of red meat, including the fat that's in it, that is underappreciated or may not be easy to measure. But one thing is clear, uh, looking at amount of meat that Americans, or red meat that Americans are eating. Americans are eating, I think, a similar amount of meat as they had 40, 50 years ago. The amount of, but that's all been a massive increase of chicken uh, and some increase of pork, but it's mostly, it's a huge swing from red meat to chicken. And Americans are eating less red meat than they ever were, yet the diabetes rate has gone from, you know, 4% or 3% up to, you know, 11%. Uh, and it'd be hard to blame that on red meat. You know, the intent of this topic was, when I put it on a list of topics, it was really to examine red meat, not processed red meat. Or processed meat. Um, it was unprocessed red meat, steaks, whatever. Um, I think that um, Miriam, you know, when she was going through the literature, and I, I didn't ever really discuss this with you, but a lot of the literature is confounded by conflating the two processed and unprocessed meats. Um, I think a lot of them combine them, they don't always separate the results out. So I think that, that those studies are kind of contaminated by the processed meat, which may, like you said, there may be a little bit more, slightly more evidence that it may be harmful. Um, the, if you notice the, when she had the Nutrirex committee up there, it's the first time I, I pointed it out to her because it's the first time I've ever seen in a, you know, the disclosures, their eating preferences. Um, that was like remarkable to me. And actually, if you look at the list, the chairman of the committee is a pescatarian. So he's not a meat eater at all. And so the, his bias certainly would be the opposite of what really the recommendations came out to be, I would think. But, um, so I think I agree this, this whole area is a quagmire. In fact, it's true of almost every nutrition dietary study that's ever been done. There are so many confounding factors usually that they try and adjust for, but usually they can't. And the studies are almost always very low quality, and as almost all of these were, either low quality or very low level of evidence. Um, so you're left with basically, we're left with voting to see what you guys think um, about this. So, you know, red meat is bad for you. That's the the question. Now, again, there are environmental reasons, there are a lot of other reasons, ethical reasons that people may not want to eat meat, but we're just really focusing, we're not looking at those, we're looking at the effects on your, your personal health um, or your patient's health. Are, is red meat, and I, and I really would probably say we're talking about unprocessed meat here, so, because that was really the intent. So, um, the question is, red meat is bad for you. How many people think that this is just slam dunk, this is true? How many think it's um, partially true? So we've got a lot of people think that. How many think it's plausible? And how many think that this is just busted? It's definitely a minority. So which do you think was the best? Uh, I mean, I guess the public one's plausible. Plausible? <laughs> OK. So. 